and man, OGC really uh, busting out some slightly weird stuff. Like, why is Grimstroke back? I don't think he's been buffed. <laughs> there was a point not too long ago where people were like, if you're picking Grimstroke, you are actively just ruining the game because he has like a had like a forty three percent win rate or something in uh, Immortal Pubs, uh, something something pretty atrocious, but. Uh, here we are, OGC picking it up here. It is certainly a very potent dual lane uh, with the Sand King, and I think that's what they're really playing for here, just hoping to win the lanes once again against Fnatic and then uh, continue the momentum from there. I, I agree with your sentiment, though. Like, the hero itself hasn't been buffed that much or hasn't been buffed at all. I, I can't understand why it is back, because uh, we've been seeing yeah. it in quite a few series. It just keeps popping up. I don't know. I guess we'll uh, maybe you could explain it after we watch this game. Uh, Fnatic, they go into the Nature's Prophet now uh, on their end of things, and I imagine that's probably going to be a support Nature's Prophet. Uh, I believe we saw an, a core Prophet being played by AG yesterday to a great success. I don't know, though. It should be support, right? Uh, I, I think so. I think it's just Fnatic looking for a strong strong laning support to be a little bit of a bully though uh, i'm not 100 percent sure like the the two range supports on the side of seed aren't necessarily the best at dealing with the trans at least not uh early on and especially not if you're wanting to if you're wanting to get some more points up in the ink swell to kind of synergize with your sand king but uh there is always the opportunity for them to run it as a core nature's profit does enable some like truly degenerate pushes but it's just a, if that's your plan it doesn't make sense to take it in this position so i think just based on where it is in the draft it is most likely just going to be uh kind of your support profit OG, uh pick up the sven that's another hero i've been wondering about basket the thing is I, I i don't think this is a great position one right now but ogc picked it up yesterday and here we go again uh with the sven I mean, he got the new Ags upgrade, right? The Superman upgrade right. and whatever else. And it seems to sometimes work, sometimes doesn't. Does it inspire confidence in you seeing this fit? I think it suits their playstyle after looking at the previous game. Because what they were really doing was just trying to do well in the lanes. And then they were really just letting Madara farm. And he was often, they were often just playing split. Uh, four of them on one side of the map, Madara taking the safe farm kind of in the wake of those heroes sort of sweeping across and forcing Fnatic to move around. Uh, so I think if that's your plan, if you really just want to play 4 Protect 1 and have this big game-winning hero, and then I think Sven is a, a pretty good approach. And not a bad pick uh, in this situation. I mean, of course, you still have two heroes. At the time that they picked it, they still had two heroes left on the side of Fnatic, so you are going to get counterpicked at least a little bit, but it's good against the Nature's Prophet and I would say okay against Ember, uh, and it just brings some more lockdown to the table. They, I think, having picked the AA, and that seems like something that you know, OGC between these remaining. two games they do like to prioritize at least a little bit. Uh, you definitely want that reliable stun coming from your carry just to be able to to set up the cold feet and whatnot. So that makes sense to me. That's fair enough. I mean, they, but like you said, the, the troll warlords there now. I imagine Sven doesn't enjoy going up against Troll too much. Uh, I guess we'll see though. Like it, it's not like it's not really going to be a guarantee that he's going to be able to get that battle trance off anyway in a team fight. Like there's so much to sable here from OG Seed already that he may yeah, never there actually is, get it there's off. There's a lot of stun, and there's only a like Fisher to counter initiate. So I, I think you're right that there is a very real possibility that Troll could just die without. Uh, getting the battle trance off. But if he manages to survive even for a tiny bit of time, then uh, should be able to get the Whirling Axes and the battle trance off and, and be just fine after that point. Uh, though there is a lot of... It's a difficult game, not only because of the stuns, but also the burst magical damage on the side of OG Seed. He's going to have to be pretty... Uh, uh, I just have to be very timely with the, the battle transies. Let's put it that way. Yeah, no, definitely correct in that. Well, Fnatic, they do have one final pickup. Three seconds reserve time, so not much time left to think about this. I wonder what it's going to be. 
for me, it looks like they're missing an off lane here, unless that profit is going to be in the off. Fnatic, they will go for the Oracle. All right, so it okay. is going to be a core nature's profit then. Uh, yeah. I mean, it could be like three shaker and four profit or something, but uh, it does seem like it. We might be looking at a at a core here. Um, it's going to rely. Uh, however, this works out, it's going to rely on like the shaker and the ember having. Pretty good games. Uh, their catch is a little bit weird. It definitely seems like the plan is uh, kind of do well in the lanes and then rat a little bit with the Ember and the Nature's Prophet while the Troll Warlord farms up. And then you've got this, uh, in theory, unkillable troll with the, the Oracle by his side. Though I don't think split pushing is going to be that easy for Fnatic this game. As we've just been saying, OGC do have a lot of lockdown already in the lineup and they've still got the opportunity to grab a little bit more with this last pick if they want to that one pick left og seed we do need a position two here i i wonder what they're thinking fanatic i mean that troll warlord oracle duo is pretty disgusting to have to verse but mm. og seed what's the uh what's the last pick up what changes things I think they're just trying to anticipate whether or not Fnatic are going to do something weird with their lanes. Like, in the last game, this Amber Spirit pick came out, and then they picked the Monkey King, and the Monkey King just kind of... He struggled a little bit for, like, the first wave. It seemed like Moon had some tricks up his sleeve for the very beginning of that matchup, but then after that, it was still just the way that that, that lane is supposed to go. But I think they need to be careful that they don't try and pick something to super counterpick the Ember on mid, and then Fnatic just put, like, the troll there in, instead. Ooh. And ooh, yeah, Sven Magnus. Magnus. Here we go. Yeah, Hello. yeah. I mean, not as uh, Magnus, not as combo reliant as he once was, and a hero that sort of just petered out of the the meta a little bit. Right, he got a couple of nerfs. People realized, like, oh, maybe the the ags isn't the strong part. Maybe it's just this new empower is really really strong. And I think people got a little bit better at, at dealing with it over time. But one of those heroes where I'm like, oh, did you know? Did he really leave the meta for for a good reason? Uh, and looks looks pretty good this game. Yeah, that it does. And I mean, the Magnus kind of goes again with the whole the amount of disable the they have. Now they have a huge RP available. You got a Baron mm. Strike. You've got Silences from Grimstroke as well as the Inkswell, the Storm Hammer from Sven. I don't know. I, I don't know how Fnatic fight into into the side of OG Seed. I I mean, sure, maybe you win out the lanes with this draft that Fnatic have, but once it comes to the mid game, once we start seeing fights happen, do you see Fnatic winning these out? Uh, I don't know if I. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna win like full five on fives, but I also don't think that their lineup is built to do that either. You know, it's just it's the fundamental difference, right? Is comparing having Sand King as your off lane on the one side, and then uh, over on the other side, we've got Nature's Prophet as the as the position three. And I think that that says everything about really the approach or what the approach should be from Fnatic this game. My big concern for them again is just their inability. I think they might have some difficulty in the mid game. Uh, playing the lanes in the way that they want to with the the Nature's Prophet and the Ember. Like, the idea, in theory, is that they have all of this mobility and they're constantly shoving lanes. But then you look at the cores on the enemy team and they all push waves incredibly quickly. Like, Magnus, Sven, and Sanking are just going to absolutely annihilate waves uh, all through the mid-game. So it should be no problem for Seed. All right, perfect. We'll see how it all goes, OG. Already wrapping around... Trying to look for a quick target. Going as five, in fact. Really wanting that early first blood. They won't find anything, though. They're just going to take an outpost and looks like they'll go back to their respective positions. Fnatic will not, uh, will not be caught out of position. No, and... I mean, OG also getting a little bit of scouting done. I don't know if Fnatic can do anything too funky to these lanes to really change them all that much like we said just oh you see it have really solid kill lanes uh all over they can get combos going with any pair of their side laners 
and there's supports, so it doesn't really matter so much if we get like crazy musical lanes or anything like that. Uh, of course, I do think they want, in general, to have the Grimstroke with the the Sand King and then the AA with the Sven, but they wouldn't mind if it ended up another way either. Well, a two for two on those bounty runes, and OG Seed at least for now are going to run a bit of a tri lane. I'm, uh, I'm sure we'll see the AATP up, but uh, they're going to give it a shot first. 23 Savage. Going to be the, le left alone on the Troll Warlord, at least for now. We will see Jabs rotating down back to the bot lane on the Oracle. I suppose if they could just get the Burrow Strike off, in fact they don't even have it, but if they did, they may have been able to go for a first blood, but instead we'll see Pexu, he'll go up top and join Madara. Yeah, it's just not worth the gamble. They're just going to go for the sort of the safe laning spells. Z Freak skills up Stroke of Fate right away. They get the Sandstorm and then also Pexu even before uh, they saw the lanes. He'd already taken the Chilling Touch. So uh, not looking to win the lanes so much off the kill combinations is at least initially as just start getting that early efficient damage down and start chewing through the uh, opposing team's regen. This is certainly not a bad way to play. And you can see Isis Ice already somewhat anticipating uh, that there's going to be a bit of a regen battle because he does go for the headdress first. Should be perfectly fine with that. Uh, looks like bot lane, we did lose a bit of HP on Sibi, but uh, he'll be fine. It was just Jabs dishing out some harassment through that fortune zen. Mid lane, meanwhile, Moon's already getting dived by Chessie and it uh, looks like Moon might be dead. In fact, Moon was the one diving. Which is why that T1 was dealing so much damage. He will fairy fire and get away with his life intact. I'm, uh, I'm not sure how he ends up in that position, but I imagine it had something to do with the skewer. Yeah, I don't think it was a dive. I think he just got skewered back as he was going for a last hit and some very nice value damage from, uh, from Jesse. You always uh, gotta watch out for that if you're Moon. It's, he's just always gonna be looking for that skewer when it is available. Looks like we may see first blood on Z Freak bot lane as the Grimstroke is actually going to get taken down by 23 Savage. And well, he was kind of just left alone there as Sippy was farming by the T1 tower and they just take advantage of it. Yeah, I got to give Troll Warlord some respect as a, as a laning hero. So another skewer attempted at mid, but I think Moon may be slight dodging it this time around. So Jesse just going to salve up. You're right. It's uh, doing pretty well considering the lane. I I, I thought the uh, the Magnus would have a better time in this mid lane because he has that empower, that, that inbuilt extra right click, but it seems as though Moon is doing pretty darn good considering. Yeah, it's still early days, and they did nerf the... Uh, they, they nerfed his base damage a little bit in 7.24, uh, and the cleave also you know, ramps up a little bit more. It's only 10% at level 1. Uh, compared to 15% previously, so it's not as much of an auto win on the lane, but I, it, it doesn't even really matter so much for Magnus. It's, I think this mid lane is going to be a bit of a wash, and both of them are just going to go far. Oh, Jabs goes down bot lane, Sibi picking up the kill on the Sand Kings. Savage going to try and uh, harass him out a little bit, but Sibi is going to pull a, what seems to be a double wave away. In fact, he's just going to sandstorm it up now, and perhaps they just farm behind that T1 tower of the Radiant side. I guess this is a pretty good way of forcing uh, forcing Savage to maybe miss a few last hits, but then again, it is Savage. Doesn't look like he's going to have too much of an issue. And, well, they're going to just keep this up. So, Fortune's end. Going to fly in. Sibi going to cop a fair bit of harassment out of this. Doesn't die, but he just used a salve up, so he's only going to be left with one Tango. Uh, Fnatic happily going to return back into their lane. Yeah, if we can keep the Sand King low, then at least it'll be a trade if uh, OG make any kind of an attempt. And it does seem like they're pretty content to just kind of back lane a little bit for now. Zfreak is continuing to take some of this experience. I thought it was fine uh, on the previous double wave when he was just about to get level 3, but I think it would have been better uh, for that particular double wave just now to maybe dodge experience and let the Sand King maybe perhaps get his level four. Because now they've just got two level three and a half heroes, which doesn't really, you know, not really making the best use of the experience, but shouldn't be too big of a deal at the end of the day. Yeah, he's uh, he's rotating around now. It looks like he may end up in the mid lane. 
Z Freak has one mango available for mana purposes. He's gonna make his way over. I I, I guess with Chessie he does have some kill potential with the Ink Swall. Jabs is chasing after his at the moment. Put down a sentry just to put some damage on him. I don't think he can kill him, but he's gonna try. This definitely is. The Ember falling low. Moon does go down, but DJ has the rotation and does get the trade with the Fisher. And bot lane, they do end up getting Sibi on the Sand King. The Jabs very persistent with chasing him down with that harassment. And Savage came over and dished out a little bit himself. Fnatic essentially finding a two-for-one trade. Yeah, pretty nice for them. Good rotation out of DJ. Uh, who died first at mid uh, so, moon moon died first yeah yeah so dj got quite a lot of experience nice so he didn't back. have a whole lot to begin with unfortunately for him poor moon as soon as he came back into the lane chess he just skewered him straight back into the t1 he's already lost so much hp does have his bottle available at least but uh Chessie again just showing some aggression in this mid lane well, trouble for jabs he get chased down Fire strike there. Z Freak does actually pick up the kill on the Grimstroke, and Sibi will just salve up. And there's that combo finally coming into play, right? We haven't really seen too much of it, but we do finally get a taste of the Baron Strike Ink Swell. And I, I guess Jabs can't really afford to be that close in anymore. No, he's been trying to interrupt the farm, but I think he just needs to give up on that. that moon. Moon. In some danger at mid, but not dead. Watch and Zen. Purifying Flames. Jabs going to help him out as Moon will salve up. Chessie does at least get himself an illusion room, but doesn't really have a bottle anyway. And looks like he's going to be chased down by Jabs. They're not really planning to leave him alone, but now Z Freak joins in. Silence is going to be there. Fortune's End already connecting. Chessie still going to try and make a run for it, just in that tree line. But now DJ joins in. Fisher does connect. Jabs has purifying flames. Does get it off in the end of Z Freak. Going to go for an ink swell now. Pexu even rotating it on the AA. They get Jabs, but you've lost your Magnus and... I mean, Fnatic, they're going to be satisfied with that. Yeah, they're going to be really happy with that. That's a position 5 for position 2. Yeah, Tornado Savage is just completely uninterrupted, just free farming on the, the bottom side of the map. Uh, going to be very greedy. He's just got the Battle Fury immediately queued up. I'm not normally... Oop, Madara and Madara. On the top. Yeah, DJ just yeah. going to chase him down. Ice 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 going to TP as well. The, he kind of misses out. Madara actually going to get away from this. Just straight out runs. So, uh, I thought it was going to be a very free kill though. Bot lane, Sibi. Fortune's End does connect. Moon going to rotate over with the Flame Guard. Whirling Axe has come out and Sibi cannot sustain the damage. And does end up going down. And I, I got to tell you, Fnatic, they're looking pretty good. Yeah, this is, this is a really nice start. The Nature's Prophet's gotten quite a lot top, but... And that's without really any help from DJ. He's been spending a lot of time mid. Uh, Moon is doing pretty well, and he's going to come online and be more active than the Magnus, who really uh, just wants to sit back and farm at least a little bit to grab those initial couple of items. And Troll Willard is completely leading the way. Actually, switch it to net worth just to show for a second how far ahead this Troll Whoa. Willard is eight minutes in. Holy, how, how did he even do that? He just has every CS, right? That he's gotten every creep under the tower. He hasn't missed really probably a single one, and he's been farming uh, neutrals in between. So this is just the downside of backlaning and uh, not pressuring him at all. He's going to get a, some crazy fast time moves. Well, it's uh, going to be concerned from OG Seed. I, I, I thought the Battle Fury initially was going to be a little bit greedy from Savage, but I, when you're farming this fast, why the hell not, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it seems like the way that they want to play this. Oh. RP, scare back. Do they have the lockdown? Uh, it looks like they might. Moon, Fisher does come in. DJ trying to save. It will be enough. The slide of fist does come out, though. The T1 tower hit is chasing Moon and actually does get him. Chessy, meanwhile, still trying to run away from DJ. Urn will help him out a little bit as Fortune Zen going to stop the chase onto the Earth Jacob. But Jabs definitely going to go down here in OG Seed. Even popping the God Strength for that last hit from Madara. But they do get some very, very nice kills across the map. Oh, it was almost such a nice turnaround for Fnatic, but then Chassis just a little bit too tanky. And uh, that was a really sad situation for Moon, watching him die to that last tier 1 tower shot. 
Uh, I mean, at least 23 Savage is farming in the meantime, but that, that really hurts losing your mid and your, your position 3, not getting anything back. It certainly does. So it looks like Fnatic uh, going to maintain that aggression. They're going to be in that die jungle, keep eyes out on Madara. I guess this is one of the things you can do with a with a Sven, right? You just control that dire jungle, and there's not really much he can do about it. Oh, Peksu, are you just trapped? Is this just to the death? All right. <laughs> the old Warcraft three block. Oh boy. Ice, ice, ice on the Nature's Prophet. The man knows it like the back of his hand. And with that, it looks like he should be able to just clean up the T1 tower. Maybe not. City thinking to try and stop him. But DJ's also here, and more TPs. It's actually, the Troll Warlord coming to this outpost. Savage. Gonna join in. Has the Demon Edge now available, and they really want that T1, so they're just gonna go straight for it. Sibi, absolutely nothing the poor man can do. That'll be the first tower of the game going down. In fact, that's the second, excuse me. The, uh, the bot T1 also went down 23 Savage. Yeah, my only concern is that this, like... If there was ever a game to build Battle Fear and Troll, this has to be it, right? When you've got such a good start. But I also wonder if it could be a little bit of a bait. Uh, just because of the way that they're... Oh, I guess hold that thought. Chase is getting gone on here. Yeah, Sprout not really going to do much as the skill goes through. They almost get him, but not quite a Z freak. Oh, no. How did they kill Savage? He was just too far up, right? And... Ice Blast, Chain Stun, you can look at the fight recap to see what happened. Too many disables. The Phantom's Embrace also really annoying to deal with. Uh, I'm, I'm worried that this Battle Fury could be a little bit of a bait. Because you look at the way that Isis Ice is building, and he's just going all in for this early mech. Uh, it really seems like Fnatic just sort of planning on uh, getting a lot done in the early to mid game. Well, Ice 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 uh, got yeah. dived on a little bit. Be fine. Yeah, but uh, th now they're gonna have to wait quite a while for this troll. Like, if the plan was just to go, 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 then they, he could have gone like Yasha, maybe as a slightly greedy item because he had a good start, and then defusal, uh, and then just go straight into his BKB. But the the Battle Fury is gonna like condense the overall timing a little bit, but he's gonna miss out on some of that uh, early like early spike, synergizing up with the the Nature's Prophet getting his mech and. And whatnot. So we'll see how it works out in the long run. That death is certainly very costly, and the Sven is already starting to close the gap a little bit. Well, it looks like Savage probably won't move, be, uh, be moving out of his own side of the map anytime soon. Not until he gets that B Fury up. But maybe another he... skewer mid. <laughs> oh my! Poor Moon got RP'd again. Silence is there from Z Freak. Now, how do you get out of this? The answer is you don't. As Sivi has the Burrow Strike, and Chessy. He's just on point with these skills. I don't know how he keeps doing it. Yeah, and the positioning from Z Freak has also been sick. This, this one point in the Phantom's Embrace has done so much work for them so far this game. Certainly has, and I, I, I guess maybe that's one of the powerful points of the uh, the Grimstroke pick up against something like an Ember. So you just have that inbuilt silences. Well, ice, ice, ice. Gonna try and push out that mid T1, get a bit of a m bit more map control. It's almost got it down. Chessie is gonna be there to defend. Nice, nice, nice. Actually, not backing off. They're gonna start moving forward, but there's the soul bite into the double silence and the ice blast. It's gonna be a lot of damage, but the false promise just there in the nick of time onto ice, ice, ice. I imagine he still ticks out here, though. He does go for the TP, and he actually ends up surviving. I think it, it it hurts for Fnatic to get rebuffed like that. They've just picked up Mech on the the Nature's Prophet, and good that they managed to keep him alive, but didn't manage to take the tower. They've got the blink on the Sand King now. Uh, and this is really, I think, supposed to be a bigger timing for Fnatic. Yeah, they got the Inkswall stun. The Fate's Edict, though, gonna save the day, though. Hold on a minute. Ice Blast gonna fly in. Moon! Just kind of stuck around. Yeah, oh boy. didn't didn't run anywhere. Has has all his remnants. It was just just weird. Definitely was pretty weird. With that, I mean, OGC take another massive kill. 
with, with this draft, Fnatic, right? They they need to have an early lead. I, I think you already spoke about this, but they they uh they're kind of giving that away a little bit, it seems. Yeah, I, I really think that the plan was to do. I mean, they've they've come out of the gates pretty well, taking those early tier ones, but uh, their lineup feels a little bit ill-equipped to fight at this point. The Nature's Prophet really, really wants to take every fight presented to them, but the Troll Warlord and the Ember are just not really in uh, Savage. fighting shape quite yet. Jesse, interesting blink. He just blinks back, doesn't actually go for the Ink Swall stun. They did end up getting that mid-T1 at least for the side of Fnatic. So now all outer T1s are gone for OG Seed, and Fnatic will immediately jump into that Dire Side jungle. It's going to make it a little bit harder for Madara to uh, to get that farm up, but he's already farming bot lane, and OG Seed looks like they're kind of ready to take a team fight again. They've got RP, they've got Burrow, they've got uh, Epicenter. Ice 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 is going to keep tabs on where Sibi is. I'm trying to figure out if this comes down to a carry battle, if the if the troll just like has the matchup edge on the on the Sven, because there are a lot of other heroes in this game that I think are going to just sort of scale out of being relevant. Like having watched the way that Chessie played in the previous game, I don't think he's going to be farming super hard uh, and focusing on scaling into the late game as a big right-click damage dealer. He's very much in the middle of the net worth right now, and he's gone for a first item blink dagger. So you can you can see the intention there. He's not planning on being a big right clicker in the late game. He's really just there to set up for the Sven. Uh, Sand King, like we talked about during the draft, just has kind of weird scaling adding into the late game. And Nature's Prophet, I think, also, especially with a mech first, is not going to be going anywhere so this game might just come down to the carry matchup and in that case it might just be that troll warlord has the the matchup edge over the sven of course there's always going to be external factors vision and initiation and you know big rps and stuff like that but the tool to teach. that might just be the plan for fanatic here uh, the... definitely could be his sibi oh lane got dusted up remnants forward from moon he couldn't quite find the target sibi will just blink away Fnatic, they do look to be a little bit aggressive, it seems. Yeah. No, they've got the blink on DJ. So that's the timing that they're trying to utilize there. Uh, blink on DJ, and they've still got this, of course, got the mech on the Nature's Prophet. So just go and take really any fight offered to them and uh, just continue to have 23 Savage farm up. Is he... Okay, so he is trying to get away with not buying BKB. So Fnatic very reliant on... Uh, just good positioning from Jabs, making sure that he gets his uh, ultimate off on the Troll Warlord when he needs it. Mid lane, Jesse looking for the RP, doesn't throw it out yet, but they will get Jabs immediately. And now DJ, he's going to be forced to blink away. They're going to continue the chase. It looks like DJ should be fine, as he does have teammates around. And we'll throw out a nice three-man Fisher. So just an Oracle kill for now. Take the outpost back. If we could go back to your point... That uh, that no BKB on the troll warlord, I seems kind of crazy to me. It's, I think it's it's high risk, but it's very high reward. Like the 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 games that feel the best on troll warlord are the games where you get away with not having to buy BKB. Right, Sibby, top lane gonna be in trouble. RP obviously not gonna be committed. Chessy though, ice blast. RP still not being used. He does get it out eventually, but. A bit too late, and 23 Savage going to take a very, very easy double kill. <laughs> really easy Echo Slam to just mash as the skewer came in there for <laughs> DJ. And yeah, that was... Uh, okay, so now the Troll Warlord is back to being like 2.5k ahead of the nearest counterpart. And yeah, the, in theory, he can get away with not buying... He can beat this game because he should always have the Oracle there to save him and your itemization and everything else feels so much nicer for Troll if you don't have to buy DKB. You can just get S and Y and Zatanic and just get super tanky, get your Basher Abyssal stuff earlier. Uh it's great. And also I think when you've got when you've built Battle Fury, your itemization and your inventory can start to get really 
clogged, and so that's even further incentive to not buy the BKB if you can uh, avoid it. And he's got the Aegis, of course, now, so even less incentive to buy BKB because of that. That's a very fair point. Uh, Savage will go ahead and take the top tier 2 tower. They'll fortify, but he's not moving anywhere. He's definitely going to go ahead and take that. OG Seed still trying to get that bottom tier 1, and we are almost 20 minutes into the game. This is actually going to be their first tier 1 tower that they're managing to take. Uh, it's a slight concern here for OG Seed, but they will grab it. You'll see Fnatic now rotate into the mid tier 2. Back Moon. Find someone to fight, start this team fight. He gets the chains off onto Chessie. So Sibi going to come in with the Baron Strike. Silence Moon. He will remnant out. But Savage, he's still hitting up on that mid tier too. He's uh, not concerned whatsoever. Oh, they're looking for SSOs. Sibi. He gets. Not slow. He's going to run away, but DJ gets a massive Fisher off. Madara falling quite low to Savage. Battle Trance has been popped. Madara, he has a BKB, but it does nothing. And Peksu also going down on the AA. As Jabs will chase looking for more. He wants Z Freak with that Fortune's End. May not be able to catch him. In fact, never mind. DJ's there with a the perfect Fisher. Moon Remnants forward. It's going to be a very, very easy kill. It's another three for nothing. I don't know, OGC, is it worth being that deep when you're this far behind? I, I, I think that's the right point to make here. There, there are a few little execution flubs and I think slightly questionable decisions uh, in the middle of that fight. Like they, you know, they just dropped the RP on the Shaker. But beyond that, just the decision to take that fight at all and try and go on the Nature's Prophet. And now Jesse just walking forward into trouble. Yeah, Fortune Zen going to be there. Now the Echo DJ has the damage to kill him off. They'll even find Sibi on the Sand King. Buyback will fly out from Chessy. Savage, he still holds the Aegis. He may feel comfortable enough to keep going. And yeah, they'll reset. Heal him up a little bit. Chains out onto the Sven. Still skewer back onto Ice Ice Ice. They will find the Nature's Prophet at least. And now Stroke of Fate will connect on the Troll. Do they continue chasing? It looks like they will not. They can go back in, they just have to... They they know that BKB is just being used, God Strength is still on cooldown. Uh, they just wanted to kite those couple of abilities before making another attempt at it. Savage is going to take his time and... They choose not to. They uh, do back off. And farm up a little bit more. Sibi though, keeping tabs on Savage. Oh, I think they're... They must be close to an item. I think the... Is, yeah, I think Ember's almost got BKB, so he's like, he's like 20 gold away. Sibi, gonna get caught out of position. And Sanking has nowhere to go. He just does die. Maybe now you just don't even wait for the BKB. In fact, Chains, they find Z-Free. Everyone's seemingly being out of position. And uh, Fnatic, they're gonna take a free Rax. Well, at least they've got Factor Protection for a little while here. <laughs> it's about to get disabled. Yeah, there Players it is. Back stacks, making very fast work of this melee barracks. Cold Fate Savage, he'll get out of range and... Maybe just doesn't even bother with the range racks, who cares about that? Let's just back off. BKB does also come out on now on Moon. And it looks like they're just going to settle for that, uh, that bottom tier 2 tower before they go for another high ground push. But with a 10k net worth advantage, once you've taken this tier 2, with the Aegis as well, like there's no reason for Fnatic to actually back off. No, not really. I mean, they are about to lose the Aegis in 30 seconds, so they may choose to back off at that point and finish the, the troll satanic. But he's pretty much got it anyway, this next creep wave. Uh, and now, okay, so he's getting it delivered all the way from the secret shop. Mid lane. Uh, from the Radiant secret shop. It's a little bit careful. Hexu does go down. Uh, Sibi trying to help out. He, they are going to get an RP off. Fate's Edict was there in time. Moon still copying a fair bit of damage. He will remnant out in time. Now is E-Freak going to get caught out on the Grimstroke just on the back. 
DJ takes care of him. Madara, he already popped the God Strength. Still has his BKB, but Savage doesn't care. And now Ice 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 blocking the way with his treants. Madara just can't do anything. Just gets blocked up. BKBs don't help when you're blocked. As Civi also going to go down. Savage with the ult chat. And this game could just be well and truly over as they're going for the T4s now. Ice Blast going to fly out. Madara, what can you do to stop this? I don't think he can do anything. He doesn't have God Strength. He doesn't have BKB. There we go. Good. Going to jump in. Echo there from DJ. Madara getting melted. He does make it to his fountain, but BK has been popped by the Ember, and they get started on the Ancient. Savage, he just uses the Battle Trance. He's had enough of this game. And 25 minutes in, Fnatic appear to have taken back game number two. Yeah, there you go. GG gets called. Wow, that went... That game just ended so fast. Out of... Not necessarily out of nowhere, right? But just one... I would say one little bad decision from OG Seed and in kind of diving that bottom tier 2 tower, they lose a couple of heroes, and it just sort of snowballs next to the next to the next. They lose another core. They couldn't, ex didn't, they weren't able to execute their spell combos at all. In fairness, a lot of what they have is pretty single target, uh, and Fnatic are never going to give anyone clumped up. Uh, there's never going to be an opportunity to get a big multi-man RP or a big multi-man Burrow Strike. So I can understand the way that OG Seed had to play, but when Fnatic are ahead and they can just send the Troll Warlord up at your up at your buildings and up in your face, it's uh, it's really hard to deal with. And Troll just had, other than that one death, Troll had like the freest game ever. I can't disagree with you at all, Baskip. Of course, luckily for us, we do have two more best of twos today. Uh, the next one will be Fnatic again, versing Thunder Predator this time around. And uh, I suppose we are going to have a small break, and I'll try and update the uh, the timer on the screen once we know the ETA. But it is MLP, Dota, and Baskip. We'll be right back for that second series in hopefully just a moment. 